In this clip, we will talk about omitted variable bias. To uh, discuss this properly, we'll have to set out our little world. Let's assume there is a correct model that describes the relationship between y as a dependent variable and x1 and x2 as explanatory variables. And this is this model, the correct model. Call it the asterisk model. However, Someone naively thinks, oh, I'm really only interested in the effect of x1, so in a value of coefficient beta, let's only estimate this model, y1 as a function of x1. We get a new error term, which combines the effect of the old error term u and the omitted variable x2. So this is our estimated model. So if we estimate this model by OLS, we know that the OLS estimator for beta 1 is going to look like this. Beta 1, and I shall call it tilde, I could call it head, but I call it tilde to indicate it's sort of from a misspecified model, but it's covariance between x1 and y divided by the variance of x1. So that's our standard definition of the OLS estimator in a simple regression model. So the question is now, is beta tilde 1 an unbiased estimator. So is the expected value of beta 1 tilde equal to beta 1 if the correct model is indicated by the asterisk equation. So as usual to investigate this what we're going to do is we substitute for the value of y. Okay, But now what we have to substitute because it's a true model is the asterisk equation not the estimated equation but how y is related to x1 and x2. So we'll substitute the asterisk equation in here. So we have the covariance of x1i and this entire green term divided by the variance of x1i. The next step to simplify this is to basically take this covariance apart. The covariance of a sum is the sum of the covariances. So here we go. This is the same as the covariance between x1 and beta0 plus the covariance between x1 and beta1 times x1 plus covariance of x1 time x1 and beta2 times x2 plus the covariance of x1 and ui. So that's just very mechanistically taking the covariance apart and divided by the variance of xi. So now we're going to look at these terms in turn. The first one is the covariance between x1 and this term beta0. Beta0 is a true coefficient but it's constant, it's not a random variable and therefore there is no covariance. So the covariance between the random variable and the constant is going to be zero. The next term we can look at is this last term, covariance between x1i and ui this is zero if the multiple linear regression assumption for the zero conditional mean assumption holds for our original or correct model, the asterisk model. Okay, and let's make that assumption that all the usual assumptions for the original model hold. So then for the, these two terms, these are fixed coefficients and they can come outside the covariance operator. It's just a factor that can come outside the covariance operator. So we are left with this. Beta 1 times covariance of x1 and x1. Now, if you start out here, that's correct because the covariance of x1 and x1 is just the same as the variance of x1. Then divide by the variance of x1 and now, of course, you see that this cancels out. So we can take this all away. So we're left here with beta 1 and plus, and now the second term, beta 2 times the covariance of x1 and x2 divided by the variance of x1. So that is our second term. Let's look at this part of the equation, covariance x1, x2 divided by variance of x1. This should look familiar. That looks a little bit like the beta1 tilde, but just with different terms. In fact, it turns out this will be the OLS estimator of the coefficient delta1 in this regression. Regression with x2 as the dependent variable and x1 as the explanatory variable. So that term tells us something about the relationship between x1 and x2. 
So here we go. That whole beta tilde to be beta 1 tilde is beta 1 plus beta 2 times delta 1 hat. So what we've done here is we established what the OLS estimator of beta 1 is if we use our estimation model, the one which drops x2. Okay, and we get this equation. So it's beta tilde 1 for which we found this relationship. So now we're just going to bring that beta 1 term to the left hand side. So we get beta 1 tilde minus beta 1 equals beta 2 times delta 1 hat. This is what we call bias. Ideally we want this to be zero, but it will only be zero if either beta 2 is equal to zero and that is equivalent to saying that x2 is irrelevant in our original model or if delta 1 hat is equal to 0 and that will be the case if x1 and x2 are uncorrelated. We will often be able to understand the sign of this bias. Sometimes we are forced into estimating this restricted equation um, but then often we can understand the sign of the bias. So there are basically four different combinations. Beta 2 and delta 1 hat can both either be negative or positive. And then we can look at this bias and it's just uh, simple mathematics to figure out that if both are negative this term will be positive and if one is negative and the other positive then this bias will be negative. Okay. So if you understand the values for beta 2 and delta 1 hat you can you can understand what the what the bias on which direction the bias will go and to illustrate that uh, we will have a little practice question uh, coming up in just a few seconds so here's the practice question let's assume we have a correct model where the dependent variable is the average score or grades of children in a particular school and the explanatory variables are the expenditure per pupil in the school and the average family income for the children on the school, plus an error term. However, the model we estimate is the average score for the children in the school only being explained by the amount of per pupil expenditure in that school. So we are omitting the average income variable. We now assume that expenditure on per pupil expenditure in school and average income of families of children that go to school are negatively correlated and this is the situation that is most likely the case in UK due to policies like the pupil premium which gives schools extra money for children from disadvantaged backgrounds. So let's also number our equations one for the correct one, two for the estimated one and the question is now, will the OLS estimator for beta 1 from the estimation model 2 be unbiased or biased? And if it is biased, in what direction is the bias going to go? Is it a positive bias? So is beta 1 hat going to be larger than beta 1 or is it a negative bias? So pause and think about the solution. So here is how to tackle this problem. Let's write down the last equation we had, beta 1 tilde, and let beta 1 tilde be the estimator of, of beta 1 from equation 2, minus beta 1 equals the bias. So the first hint is that the assumption that the expenditure and average income are negatively correlated, that means delta 1 hat is going to be negative, it's going to be smaller. Now beta 2, we need to question, does average income have a positive or negative impact on average score? Most likely, this will be a positive impact. There's a lot of evidence that children from richer families do better. So all together, so these two have opposite signs, that means all together the bias is going to be negative. What does that mean? That means when we estimate beta 1 from equation 2, we will get a value that tends to be smaller than the true value for beta 1. So we'll underestimate the effect of expenditure on the average score.